This is Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom Podcast. We enthuse, we energize, we inspire, and we empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes in BW and beyond. Dumela viewer, Dumela dear listener, such a privilege and an honor as always. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe, your host of this show. Mohobe um, Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. I would really urge you to strike that notification bell along with the subscribe button. We need your support. Like I, I sometimes remind you, two thirds of you watch this program without subscribing and it's beginning to cost us a little bit. Please strike the subscribe button. It's just the little that we need so that we can deal with these algorithms and make sure we reach more people. I'm delighted to welcome. Dr. Kim Ramatapana to the studio and she's going to introduce herself in greater detail. We're going to talk about education and I'm going to be pushing her on entrepreneurial education as well. Uh, but over to you, Dr. Kim Ramatapana, please give us a condensed version of your CV, <laughs> your very illustrious CV. Thank you very much, Mr. Mohobe. Well, um, my name is Dr. Kim Ramatlapana, like I've mentioned earlier. Um, I was born and bred in Francistown. I went to school in Francistown, then I uh, enrolled in the PESC um, program at the University of Botswana that prepared me to be a mass teacher, mm. which uh, is the work that I did for, those for a who very don't long know, that's time. The pre-entry science course. Pre-entry science course, mm. you know, that I identified a uh, students that uh, were doing well in maths and sciences uh, and channel them into science-based careers. Mm. So I ended up as a maths teacher and uh, it's a job that I really loved because m really maths was my, my era of interest. So I uh, later on moved into academics. I was at the University of Botswana for some time and then I wanted to grow myself into in my knowledge and uh, did my PhD at the University of the Vetvatersrand, where I was also working there in the Department of Maths and Science Education. Um, I was uh, working with undergraduates and uh, graduate students, researching and uh, teaching and learning mathematics. Mm -hmm. What is the PhD on? My PhD is about uh, uh, technology integration in teaching and learning of mathematics. It's really about uh, looking at the knowledge of uh, how to integrate technology into into the classroom, what knowledge is needed for one to be able to do that mm -hmm. effectively. Okay. Yes. Then um, I also uh, worked at the University of, the, of Johannesburg, where I was also doing the same job of uh, researching and uh, 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 developing um, math and science mm. education. Okay. Yes. So then um, uh, I moved, I decided that uh, why would I be taking time researching in I, another country when I have my own home? Mm. So I decided to, you know, why don't I go and make a difference in my country? So I came back home and... Um, when was I this? That was in 2019, 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. And I, I came across the Teach for All approach, mm -hmm. which really is uh, focusing on uh, education and equity. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I looked at Use it. Use your hands, madam. When, hey. when <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry. For me, yes. I, 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 at that point, I, did, I couldn't understand because I, I understand that equity means disparities. Mm. But when you look at it from the as outside point of view, you think that um, education, there's no equities in education in Botswana. Mm -hmm. Because we think of it in terms of uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. in, in the terms of education, there's equal education distributed to all students yes. equally. But it's actually not. Mm. Because you have those that do not receive the quality education that they need, particularly when you go to to uh, underserved communities. So you see marginalized uh, 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 communities or children from marginalized communities uh, having this injustice of well, receiving quality education. What is teach for all, and who came up with the idea? Can you give us just sort of the genesis of the idea? 
how it developed. Yes, Teach for All is an idea uh, concept that was developed by one Wendy mm. Cobb. Wendy? Wendy Cobb, an American mm -hmm. um, citizen. Mm -hmm. she, um, she realized that children from marginalized communities, their future was already determined mm -hmm. because of where they come from. So um, she said, oh, why can't we come up with an, a, a program that would develop, build a pipeline of leaders that would provide, um, try and, 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 and close that gap of disparities. So that is, can only be possible if you look at, you, you develop um, the concept of collective leadership, mm. bringing all those that are in, uh, involved in education to see if that you can uh, uh, transform the education that uh, is provided to everyone so that uh, we all get quality education regardless of where we come from. Mm -hmm. And that concept really uh, uh, resonated with me uh, to say that yes, in my country, that's 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 exactly what is happening. We have a crisis where not all children receive the same education, regardless of the buildings that they have. Mm -hmm. But you would find that where you come from naturally would determine whether you are going to be s succeed in life. Mm -hmm. Yes. So your lot in life is determined at a very early stage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's determined at a very, at a very early mm -hmm. stage. But then again, when you look at the the, the the concept of, of education that is provided, there is that transition. Mm -hmm. And in the transition, there will always be those that are left behind, mm -hmm. those that are, 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 are rejected by the system. So then, then the thing is, if they're rejected by the system, then what do we do about them? Do we have uh, measures put in place to ensure that they are prepared mm -hmm. before they are rejected by the system? So that is the gap that we found mm. as Teach for Botswana. How did you come across? Uh, the the whole concept how did you bump into the idea as it were the idea of teach for all yes um well i, I was uh, like i said when i came i wanted to make a difference because i was doing research in in, in, in teaching and learning mm. in education in south africa so then i said oh, I, I, I try to do research and f to find out if there's anybody that is doing anything about it. Mm. So then I, I raise my hand and I say, this is the work that I think mm. our, uh, I'm meant to be doing. Yeah, but I yes. guess I, w I want to know what was the initial trigger for you to say, wow, who brought it to your <laughs> consciousness or your attention? Um, what, what brought into my attention was, okay, here is an organization. So... And this organization You're just has researching at random and they kept yes. coming. Here is this organization that is able to capture or, or, or whose concept is spread across globally. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is it that is particular about this concept? Mm. So I had to immerse myself through this research and also I, I had the opportunity to visit communities. Mm -hmm. I visited communities uh, in Botswana. I visited uh, schools in Botswana. I e even went... Um, to, to organization Africa mm -hmm. to see how this approach is implemented. So okay. I, in Africa and in Asia as well, to look at different contexts because I wanted to, 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 to contextualize it for the Botswana situation mm -hmm. so that it should not be just a cut and paste okay. uh, approach. So you, did you take uh, like a whole month to a whole year? How long uh, to to, to, to to familiarize yourself fully yes. with, to immerse yourself, as yes. you say. Yes, I really, really wanted to really immerse myself so mm. that I own this uh, concept, mm. you know. So it has taken me three years mm -hmm. to do that. Okay. Because it, it, it's a matter of also looking at the program, programmatic uh, a part of the organization. Mm -hmm. What uh, setting up, uh, it could be your me uh, measuring and evaluation tool, it could be your your policies for the organization, it could be your, the program for the organization, mm -hmm. it could be also t identifying who fits well mm -hmm. in the organization in terms of the fellows that we want to do the work. Okay, yes. so, so is it a company, an entity, an NGO, um, describe the Teach for All and then Teach for Botswana in terms of the structure and the yes. setup? The legal setup. Yes. Teach for All is, is just a global network mm -hmm. of independent organizations that are using that same concept for Teach for All. So Teach for Botswana is also an independent organization that is fully registered as a, as a, as a, 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 
non-profit organization under SIPA mm -hmm. as a, a company limited by guarantee. Mm -hmm. So um, it has a fully fledged board that uh, independent board that oversees the activities of the organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the outreach in Botswana, how far is the organization and where is it active? The organization um, is, is new, it's still, it's still is, it's in its early stage. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, communities that uh, and schools that we work with. We have schools that we work with right here in Gaburoni. You, because you'll be surprised, you think that uh, we don't have marginalized communities within cities. They do exist. And we are also in the Northwest region in uh, two villages. We are in um, Sihitwa and Tsau. Mm -hmm. And uh, really those regions, we are at a stage where we are piloting our work and we'll be expanding into other regions okay. as, as, as time goes on. What is the unique aspect of this uh, Teach for Botswana or Teach for All method? Yes. What would you say is the distinguishing variation or yeah. factor about yeah. it? The, the, the distinction variating factor about it is the leadership. Now, when we talk about leadership, we, we think about in terms of the, that hierarchical structure. But um, because Teach for All talks about collective leadership, if it's everybody having a role to play. Now, for everybody having a role to play, really, it starts with the I individual. So therefore, in terms of leadership, we are talking about what is it that you can do? Mm -hmm. What are your competencies? So that's very unique about it because we, we want to develop that leadership at a grassroots level. At but what ages are we talking? Standard we are, one? We are talking at primary school, secondary school. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, it, it, it's a concept that really that can be uh, is applicable to all stages of, mm -hmm. of, of, of all tiers of the education system. So, so how do you actually inject it then uh, into the uh, current education system? Does it require curriculum change or it can be integrated into the current curriculum? Yeah, so we, it, it, it's about bringing the element of leadership within the curriculum. Mm -hmm. When you bring it, it's in, t in terms of um, um, developing the learner or the teacher being able to uh, deconstruct the curriculum in such a way that the learner owns it, you mm -hmm. know, owns it and has, has that, uh, that zeal mm -hmm. to be able to participate in the classroom. The teacher as well develops their own leadership skills. So in, 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 in actual fact, there, there are four, four or three, three, three levels in which we look at the approach. We are saying, um, this approach is about recognizing the student as the leader mm -hmm. because you have to think think of, of um, what is the purpose of the education that you are providing to the student if the student is not part of that vision so the student must be the leader mm -hmm. and the teacher must be the facilitator mm -hmm. it must be the learner yes yes and the community must be empowered mm -hmm. you mean you the know. parents yes mm -hmm. so in other words when you say the community must be empowered it means that there shouldn't be that gap between the school between education and and the community yeah the community has to be part of the of the education system it has to be part of the decisions it is part of the growing that future leader mm -hmm. yes some of my guests on this very show have argued very strongly mm -hmm. that there is need to introduce financial education and emotional intelligence at a very early age. Some have also argued that there is need to bring in mm. STEM yeah. or the STEM methodology at yeah. an early stage. What is the position of Teach for All and Teach for Botswana on this? Well, Teach for All, Teach for Botswana, we believe that um, curriculum I learning must include the curriculum or the academic and the non-academic mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. So you find the way, the way we, we, we structure the curriculum, we only focus on the academic. And as such, we do not prepare them for what if after school, mm -hmm. you know. So our approach is we bring in the non-academic and infuse it 
into the, 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 the current curriculum mm -hmm. that is focused on academic. So that's why one of, one of our aim is to, to ensure that we improve academic achievement mm -hmm. and at the same time develop leadership skills of our students. So therefore, um, we, 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 we re-transform the curriculum mm -hmm. in such a way that it's mini-making. Like when you're talking about the STEM, mini? mini making. Yeah, it makes, it it makes, makes sense, sense mm. to the learner. Mm -hmm. It's not about regurgitating what the teacher is presenting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's at the end of the day, a student must be able to understand why they're, they're, they're learning about a parabola. Mm. You know, there must be a reason why they're learning about uh, mixing uh, ingredients mm -hmm. in any subject. You know? Okay. Yes. So therefore, we, we restructure the, the, the curriculum. Um, bring in innovative, I must stress that, innovative uh, uh, methodologies of teaching the curriculum. So specifically on those two subjects of uh, emotional intelligence and financial education, what does the methodology say? The, the, the methodology is saying, um, it, it's, it's more, I, I'll take an example about financial literacy. Um, it's about understanding why the importance of literacy of, of, of finance. Mm -hmm. Let me just start there. Yeah. The importance of finance mm -hmm. and how is it applicable to after school? Okay. You know how 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 also is is about how does the teacher uh, um, deconstruct the content in such a way that when they, they are teaching about financial literacy, mm -hmm. the student is able to apply even outside the school or even inside the school mm. or, or infuse the theory and practice let me put it that way mm. be able to infuse the theory and practice and okay. and the same thing applies to stem when you look at stem subject stem subjects the way they are they are taught mostly is they're taught in, in a more abstract mm. manner mm -hmm. you know so yes it's about mastery of the content so we are looking we want we look beyond the mastery of the content yes that's very interesting now, for us to understand this more clearly, perhaps you can give a few examples in terms of successes and triumphs um, of the system and where it has been applied as you were doing your research and so on. Yeah. Well, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you um, a typical example that I got when I, I met myself with one community in, uh, in Kenya, Nairobi. Mm. And they you have students that come from slums, slums that are just neighbors of a affluent f uh, community, mm. you know. And of course there is crime, of course there is a, a economic, economic status is very low, you know. So there's this individual that came from that community said, you know, I want to change my community. What can I do? There is, we have streams that cut across the, the, the slums. Mm. And because of that, the community is using that. Mm. And using the, that kind of, that water. You mean which sewage? Is, yes, mm. the sewage water, mm. because there's no other place where they can get water. Mm. So this dropout came out with this, <laughs> this innovative idea of saying, let's rise up as a community and see if we can help ourselves. Because one of the pillars of this approach is that the community is, has the power to change things for themselves. So he... He, he, he him had dropped out of school. Yes, he dropped out of the school. So him and the community, they came up with the idea of, let's, let's uh, put boreholes. Mm. Let's come up with boreholes and clean the waters ourselves. Mm and then use this water. And in that way, we'll be reducing, uh, dealing with issues of health. We'll, deal, we'll be dealing with issues of unavailability of clean water for mm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it became a project that was spread out into the whole country. So wha what's the role so of Teach for All the there? Role teach for All, was he a, um, yes. part of Teach for yes. You didn't mention that connection. He's, 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 a, he's a, a, a co-founder of a Teach for All partner mm -hmm. in Kenya. Oh yes, so it it fascinated me to say well. So as we speak, there are boreholes everywhere. Yes, it's been successful. It has been successful. They've been able to 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 uh, build a, 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 um, 
what is it, health facility mm. for the communities. Wow. They are able to, to, to uh, they have learning so centers. So he's a dropout. At what point is he now trained by Teach for All? I take it that his, his awareness came from Teach for All. I'm you trying. You, you yeah. know, Teach for All, what he does is they have this concept. And if you really infuse yourself with this concept, mm -hmm. you get to have and learn some few, th few things here and there, mm -hmm. and learn them, and become, uh, come up with uh, innovative ideas that change the situation that you are in. Yes, yes. That's so in this idea. case, uh, how did, did that happen? In the case of this Kenyan <laughs> dropout. <laughs> this dropout. Through this approach, mm. he was able to, you know, he went back to school. Oh, he did. That's yes. the part I wanted to. Yeah. He went back to school. Mm. He 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 got his PhD. Wow. And mm. through that, he said, "Why why can't I give back to my community? Mm. You know, why can't I give back?" So to by my the time he came up with this idea, he already had a PhD. He was in the process of doing the PhD. And yeah. Was part of that PhD. Oh. Yes. Sounds so exciting. Mm. Any other f spectacular successes like that? Um. Well, I, I, would, I would say one example. Uh, one, of, one of the panelists that, that we had in our stakeholder event was uh, David Oliphant from, from South Africa. So he's from Cape Town. So what they did, they started this uh, organization at the Cape Flats. And because of the impact that they made, right now they've expanded to 130 communities wow. throughout South Africa. Wow. They've been able to, to um, through the, the uh, leadership development program of, of, of building a pipeline of, of fellows that um, uh, develop leadership within the schools. They have been able to develop those um, fellows into fully fledged teachers because they had to go through the um, postgraduate diploma in education program and th the thing about this approach is it's it's um, it's it's, uh, it's infused into the school system is the the, the the fellow who's in the classroom spreading leadership skills to the learners in the classroom and these learners spread what they learn from the fellow to the communities where they come from. And the fellow also engage with the communities where these learners come from. Wow. So you see that ripple effect. Mm, mm. Yes. And of course, Cape Flats, uh, mm. it's, 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 it's a marginalized community. It's, it's known for, yes. for crime and things like that. Yes. So already there's an impact yeah. in terms of mm. the reduction of crime and yeah. so on. Yeah. Mm. This there is are wonderful. many examples that I can give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. In setting something like this up, there naturally, as in, as, uh, in anything in life, setbacks, failures here and there. Do you want to tell us about that part of your journey? Um, let's, let's start with the triumphs. Mm -hmm. it's, um, I found that Botswana are, are really accommodating, and I think uh, they are at a stage where they are willing to change. They are willing to transform uh, their thinking. They are willing to transform the education system. You know, they are willing to 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 raise their hand and say, "We are wa we want to be part of this." Mm -hmm. So, it it has been a mind blowing that. Everybody that we have met, everybody that we have engaged with, they've been really supportive. They've really been wowed about, uh, about our program. And um, they, they, we have been able to create that openness for people to talk about um, what they, they wish uh, their future children, mm. future leaders to look, to be like, the attributes of the future leaders to be like, you know, and that they are open to being part of mm. that process of building those uh, future leaders. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't even touch on a single setback or failure? Um, well, the setback is that um, 
of course, if, if you are new and you are introducing uh, yourself to, uh, especially for a concept like this one that has many variables within, mm. you know, if you meet, um, y you have to, 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 you know, spread your wings. Mm -hmm. And spreading your wings means uh, you would need uh, both financial support and uh, um, maybe emotional support. Emotional <laughs> support as well. That's mm. true. E emotional support, mm. and um, we we. I mean, the the, the landscape of of Botswana philanthropy mm. is is uh, has to grow because uh, when you, when you talk about this magnitude work of this work, it's it requires so much resource mm. and. We, we don't have that open mind of contributing, you know, to a, an initiative like this mm -hmm. that is will ultimately mean that whoever invests on it, they're actually mm -hmm. investing on the future employees of the organization, the future stakeholders of, uh, or future citizens of the country that will make sure that uh, um, uh, our mm. dreams and our, our initiatives are implemented to the maximum, uh, 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 to the maximum. So r r right now, we need support in terms of uh, building this organization. Yeah. Mm. Every year, uh, we get the results for Standard 7, mm. you know, uh, CJSSs and, and obviously Cambridge. Yes. And um, Form 5. And there's always lamentation. There's always uh, complaints that yeah. they either go, are going down, the results are not satisfactory at all. Mm. And I've had a guest here, I, I, I don't mind mentioning the name, mm. uh, Mr. Khamwenyan, who has mm. come here from Inno Lead. And he's really, really, really cries that this this situation is devastating because the system seems to reject yeah. more people than it takes mm. by far. Mm. Um, how can Teach for All and Teach for BW address this lamentable situation? Um. I think we, we have to realize that um, when we talk about achievement, there are various factors that um, play around mm. or are at play. Mm. We shouldn't just be looking at um, the results. The results mm. right? We should be looking at what causes these results. And I think as a country, we have, we have not uh, been focusing on that. Or if we have been focusing on that, we have been focusing on each attribute or each variable individually. But they come together ultimately um, um, to ensure that um, the issue of achievement is addressed. So um, I've lost my line of thought Yeah, there. because what so I was asking uh, uh, is, how 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 teach for all can improve the situation? Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. So how can teach for Botswana improve the situation? Mm. Now we we there are three 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 pillars that we talk about. We talk about knowledge because yes we are we, we talk about the knowledge based society. Mm -hmm. Yes, teach for Botswana says let's develop knowledge like we have been we have been uh, called upon. To, to contribute to knowledge development. Mm -hmm. So it's knowledge development through the fellows that we put in the classroom so that um, uh, academic achievement is improved, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, for academic achievement to improve, it has to be what kind of mindset our students are at at any particular moment that will ensure that there is impressive academic achievement. So when I talk about mindset, I'm, I'm talking about w w the attitude towards, towards school, mm -hmm. the, the purpose for school, the purpose for, for going to school, the purpose mm. for being part of the school system. You know, not only the students, even the, the, the parents. You know, I, I will tell you recently, we went into one school and uh, we were talking about um, 
what vision that, that, that we wanted them to to build a vision board. Mm -hmm. Where do they see themselves in the next twenty five years? Yeah. And then the first question was, why do you come to school? The answer was that my parents says I'm, say I must come to school. So that alone told wrong, us wrong that, answer. <laughs> yes, told us that then there needs to be a shift in the mindset. Mm -hmm. And that shift in the mindset should be in the, in term of do our children take ownership of the education that is provided to them? Do they take ownership of the outcome of their result? You know, at a foundation level, mm -hmm. at a grassroots level. Mm. Yes. And then leadership, like I said earlier on, leadership is our, our, our students um, given sufficient knowledge or sufficient skills, leadership mm. skills that would enable them to prepare them for situations where you know, it, 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 a student should be able to recognize when, when their marks are going down mm -hmm. and be able to say no. It's it's it ultimately it's, it's up upon me to ensure that I I I I, I, I change mm. you know to ensure that I, I study so to ensure that, that point, I do something uh, about on that on that point at a practical level mm. how do you how do these these you manifest these interventions do you bring an army of uh, counselors or how how does it work practically for instance if we if you hear that. Um, Naledi Secondary School yeah. wants your intervention. How do you go about it? Yeah. Uh, practicalize it for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So practically what we do is we have communities that we work with that um, embrace our work. So that's the first thing that we establish. After we have established that we have what we call partner schools where we have a memorandum of understanding. They know their ro role in this uh, engagement with us. We know our role. We under um, and then we place what we call a fellow. That fellow is placed one individual. In, in, in most cases, it's two or more individuals mm -hmm. because really, if you place one individual in the school, really that um, that. Um, they, they need a support. highly trained fellow. A highly trained fellow. So mm. this highly trained fellow is, is an education graduate who is able to teach. And we uh, uh, support this individual for two years in the school. It's in terms of developing them professionally. In other words, you pay their salary. They, live, uh, they have a uh, living stipend. stipend. Yeah. Yes. So we recruit them. I should have started with the recruitment of, of this fellow. Mm. We recruit them is a very rigorous uh, exercise that we go through. Mm. Um, we, we go train them. all out and then we train them. And this training is, is for two years. Mm -hmm. So we don't train them before they go into school. It's we support them throughout the two years mm. because we want ultimately for these fellows to be leaders that will bring change into education policy it could be changed in the way we, we look at leadership. Mm -hmm. It should be changed in them being able to um, be confident, be self-reliant, and uh, 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 assertive individuals mm -hmm. that can be able to function uh, in any situation. And once he gets in the school, what once does he do? Yes, once they get in the school, they become part of the school. They, ca they can be a teacher aide where they, 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 there is a teacher in the classroom, there will be a teacher eight, or if there is no teacher eight, they are qualified to be a teacher and handle that, that class themselves. Mm -hmm. And when they work there, they don't work in isolation, they work with the teachers that they find in the school. Mm. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Mm. Very, very interesting indeed. Um, are there any uh, examples that you have in Botswana mm where you have done this and where you're beginning to see some results? Um, like I said earlier, it's, it's, uh, we are new. Mm -hmm. So we are placing our, we have recruited our, our cohort of fellows. Still training them? <laughs> we have trained them. Oh, you've trained them. We have trained them. We are placing them in next term. Okay. The first uh, April, mm -hmm. May, May, mm. yeah, in May. 
So um, because we are, we are working with uh, other organizations within the network, mm -hmm. yes, we benchmark on, the, on, on those organizations and we also have support from Teach for All. Yeah. They, they provide, um, we have the staff that is dedicated to supporting Teach for Botswana. Mm -hmm. Yes. The training uh, happens how? Is it online or you have a whole army of teachers coming in? And how do you train this? The, the, the thing is, we, we, when we place them in these schools, we want them to be part of the school mm -hmm. and the communities that these schools are in. So the training is, 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 is a, we have a, 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 a mentor or a coach that goes to them in the schools. Mm -hmm. But because we also want to build a cohort culture, because this, this, this cohort is ultimately going to be an alumni. Mm -hmm. So we, we have uh, retreats during, during the, the school holidays mm -hmm. where they come in together. So this training, by the way, like I said earlier on, that we provide professional development of these mm -hmm. fellows as well. So we have we have online courses that we have we've identified uh, for them to go through, and we are making partnerships with with universities. Right now, we are talking to two universities that um, will be part Botswana. of this. Yes, in Botswana. You be in boost, if I guessed. <laughs> you don't want to to spoil it by mentioning at this point. No. Okay, <laughs> negotiations are still they underway. Are still under. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, you know, you touched on mindset change, and of course, it's the buzzword mm. uh, around. If you if you go to government offices, ever since yeah. H.E. gave his speech two three years ago on this, um, it's a buzz, and 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 people talk are changing nonstop, mm. and it's part of um, a government policy. Um, do you see it on the ground, and uh, what more should be we be doing in the mindset change effort? Yeah. yeah. Well, l let me start by saying um, Teach, Teach for Botswana is already doing that and has recognized that it's something that needs to be done at the foundation level. So the, the thing about uh, mindset change is we have to consider um, the who. Who do we want, uh, who do we want uh, to, to, to change? Mm. their mind to shift their mind and why and for those individuals that we think need to change to, to change think uh, 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 in a different perspective are they willing are they in a space where they are willing to do that mm. so therefore uh, uh, the thing about mindset change is um, it comes from from within it, it, it's not something that it, it's, it can be forced onto you, you know. So uh, um, I'm thinking at this, at this moment, as we talk about mindset change, are we at a point where we are ready to change our mindset? It could be in the way we speak to each other. It could be the way we do things, you know. Are we, are we at a stage where we are ready? Or is, is it just an initiative that is brought to us and then we just carry along with it? Because mm. we have to think about its success. Wow. We have to think about its success. Mm. If we want it to be, success, it to be successful, we have to be at a stage where we have to think the deep within ourselves. Mm. Because like we, I said earlier on, when it comes to leadership, really mindset is about leadership change, right? Leadership change meaning, am, am I? I need to change the self first. Am I am I at a stage where I can shift mm -hmm. my thinking as a teacher? Am I at a, a, at a stage where I can relearn? I can wow. relearn the way things have been mm -hmm. as 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 a community, as a, as a, the culture, as a tradition, as the tradition, as a traditional leaders. Are we at a stage where we can shift our thinking? in such a way that um, we can bring in different Yeah, what are your thoughts ideas? on that? Are we there yet? Um, you asked a series of questions. Yes. I want you to answer them, yeah. if, you, if you don't mind. 
Well, I, I, I believe some of us are there. Mm -hmm. hey. I believe some of us are there. But uh, um, one thing that makes me hesitate is we have not had conversations on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So probably conversations will be able to unlock mm -hmm. Yes, our thinking. Because um, we want to shift from uh, reliance on other people. Yeah. Right? Mm. We want to shift from uh, putting blame on the other people. The dependency syndrome. On dependency syndrome. Mm. Putting blame on other people. Mm. But if I put a blame on you, what did I do? How did you contribute? What contribution did I make? Mm. Yes. So I take it that it's 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 a work in progress. It's a work in progress. But but it yeah, has not possible. it has not spread wide enough to be impactful, has it? It's it's a process. Mm. I might just say it's a process mm. uh, because I think uh, most of the time we think of the outcome. Okay. Yes. What is the game plan for Teach for Botswana going forward? What are the strategies already that are being rolled out? Yeah, um, uh, at Teach for Botswana, we are dreamers and uh, we, we believe that everything is possible. Mm -hmm. So we see ourselves in the next five years reaching maybe 50,000 uh, students, mm -hmm. you know, having gone through our, our program. Because um, 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 we, we, we are placing, building a pipeline of these future leaders that has to impact on the student. So we see ourselves five years from now with 50,000 uh, students impacted. We, want, we see ourselves, uh, our program have impacted about 1,000 teachers mm. in, in the next five years. Um, most of all, we, we, we see ourselves, because we are working with the communities, we see ourselves coming up with uh, facts. Facts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Doing research mm -hmm. of um, what does leadership really mean in the Botswana context, mm -hmm. yes. Who, who do we envision our future leaders to be? To be or to be to like? To be like. Mm. What What will be their attributes? Mm. So that's that's our our our, our game plan. Mm. And um, one one of the thing is, like I mentioned earlier, is when we place this pipeline of of, of fellows in the classroom, we want them to implement a lead the change program that will bring initiatives into the community. So mm. we want to see an alumni mm -hmm. that would have, in five years, probably would have uh, maybe 50, 50 or more initiatives mm -hmm. that would have changed our communities. We, like the example that I gave you about the, mm. the Kibera. Uh, we want to see initiatives like that. They change the community, the way we think within the community. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to see um, our fellows um, having impacted on the policies, mm -hmm. particularly education policies. You know, we want to see our fellows being um, impacted in the, co have an impact in the economy. For instance, um, our fellows are our future employees, you know. Mm. We would want to have, uh, a stakeholder proudly stand up and say, I have a fellow from Teach for Botswana, <laughs> an mm. alumni of Teach for Botswana, that changed around my, 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 my corporate, mm. changed around my, com my, my company mm. because of the thinking. You know. Wow. Mm. Now, internationally, how many uh, fellows are out there? How many... Um, if you like uh, alumni, um, how big is it, and can I get an idea of that? I I do not have the numbers right now, mm -hmm. but the fellows are growing. Mm. The alumni are growing, not fellows. Sorry, the mm. alumni are growing. I'll give you an example. We have Teach for America was the first um, partner. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now. Um, we have um, alumni, um, the current ambassador, U.S. ambassador for uh, Kenya, mm -hmm. is an alumni of Teach for All. Meaning he started from primary or whatever? 
as a fellow. Oh, he was a fellow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. First, he, he was, was trained, and yeah. Yes. Yes. I'll give an, also an example of India. India has has so many initiatives that have been um, developed by the alumni mm. that you know, it's numerous and numerous. Mm. Yes. Would I be correct in saying basically what you do with these uh, fellows? Is you inject rigorous personal development. You you really really uh, shift their their thinking mm -hmm. to think more entrepreneurial. Yeah. Am I correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurial. Mm. Because uh, one thing that bothered us really is. Like when you mentioned earlier on about the, uh, the, the, the exams, the outcomes, mm. we have, for instance, the, exam, the results were out recently for Form 3. Do you know that only 57% of them, or 56% of them, 57, sorry, are likely going to proceed to, to senior secondary school, mm. and then the 43% are left behind? Mm. And these that are left behind, obviously, they're going to go into the... the, the they are your future entrepreneurs mm. that were never prepared for that. As long as they don't enterprise and crime, they should enterprise that's the in thing. business. We don't want that to happen. Yeah, mm. that's the thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 you have no idea as to the numbers and the extent of global outreach and impact this thing has had. Or is it uh, internationally? Is it too early to say? There, there are there. It's just that I don't have it. I don't have them right now. Mm -hmm. But they are there. If mm -hmm. you quickly go to, if you go to the, the Teach for All uh, website, mm -hmm. you find you find statistics that is there. Okay. And yeah, and um, okay. Or all, all I know is that um, they 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 is a sh there is a shift in mm -hmm. leadership skills. Somebody wants to whisper in your ear there. Um, it's uh, hundred and thirteen thousand alumni. Okay. Hundred and thirteen thousand yes, global. Globally. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> Thank you for that, Tina. Okay. okay. And uh, this and and the organization started when? And two two thousand and seven. Originally. Yes. So in a space of uh, less than twenty years, yeah. it's, it's reached that much. Yeah. It's seventeen years or something. Yeah. So it's I must impressive. say, in Africa, there are ten partners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And As in people like yourself. Yes. Okay. So, and um, all right. So, recently you had a stakeholders uh, engagement at the National Museum. Uh, tell us about that, because that's how I first learned about you. Yeah. I didn't know, but mm. somebody insisted that I yeah. should come. Mm. Mm. Well, the, the stakeholder holder event was the space that we created mm. to bring in corporates, to bring in anybody that has interest in uh, leadership, education leader, uh, lead and leadership and inequities in, mm. in education, br brought them together to, to know, to introduce ourselves to them and for them to be able to learn from lessons from other countries. Among us, we had a Teach for Teach the Nation, which is the, uh, the South African partner. We had um, the, uh, uh, Teach for All organization, uh, global organization also represented. Mm -hmm. We also had um, 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 the, the Ministry of Education Ministry of and Stanbic, Standard Chartered. We, we had uh, mm -hmm. Um, I mean standard, cha cha standard chartered, right? We had um, Baisaho University. We had uh, Bekatili mm. among among ourselves. We had um, yeah, we had certain uh, a, 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 a handful of, 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 of organizations or corporates that uh, were there to you know to to to, to come in together from their diverse backgrounds to talk about uh, education and leadership. Mm. Yes. So, and so the one might ask exactly how you then collaborate with these uh, corporates that came. How we collaborate with, this, uh, with these corporates is um, we, we, we want them to be part of, of this initiative. How? They can be uh, champion 
the work that we want to do. Mm -hmm. They can uh, bring in the resources because if we all have resources in our different ways, bring in that, like, like I said at the beginning, this is, we are looking at collective leadership. Mm -hmm. And within education, there's this education ecosystem that has different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So this was an opportunity to bring in different stakeholders to say, let's sit together and talk about education and leadership in Botswana mm. and see if we can champion this work. Wow. Mm. And uh, in your assessment, how successful was the event? It was very successful. Mm -hmm. It was very successful, although it was a day when everybody was uh, it, uh, on the uh, uh, February 14, when Valentine's day. on Valentine's Day. But I must say people found it important that they come for just for those two hours mm -hmm. for us to have a conversation. And what came out of, of, of this conversation was we need more of these, these uh, events mm -hmm. where we can have a larger group of people from diverse backgrounds. Mm -hmm. We would have loved to have uh, our future fellow come in and present uh, to the to the to the to the audience mm -hmm. um, um, that the, the program mm. from their own point of view. Because currently we have fellows that are saying, you know what, la ridia, let's come. Mm. We want to do this. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. I want to ask you about your, your heroes and sheroes, but one person who's bound to be your, your hero or your hero is uh, a lady from Nigeria who spoke. Tell us about her. What's her name? Wongai. Yeah. Wongai mm. Nyahunze. Wongai um, is the head of Africa region, Teach for All Head of Africa region. And uh, she is championing the work of, of education and equity. And uh, really, her, her passion really is about uh, women and girls, um, championing the work of women and girls, ensuring that women and girls are given equal opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's, that's the work that uh, she has so much interest in. And um, she's also doing work on leadership development, developing uh, entrepreneurs, uh, social mm. entrepreneurs like us, you know, um, giving you different perspectives of, of uh, what leadership is. Because mm. it's the work that she has been doing for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has actually penned uh, a book recently uh, about don't self-sabotage mm -hmm. when you are <laughs> an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's doing incredible work. Yeah, she yes. she's very dynamic. I yes. saw her on stage, mm. very confident. Yes. And she knew her stuff. Mm. Is she like the Africa head or something like that? Yes, she's the Africa head for, head okay. for Teach for All. So then the, the is there headquarters in... Teach for All is, is, is uh, it's like we said, is global. Mm -hmm. So the headquarters is in, 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 in New York, mm -hmm. but they have staff globally that mm -hmm. work remotely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Mm. All right. Now, here's your chance now to project, just, just to dream and to tell us what, what you see happening 20 years down the line, a couple of, one decade to two decades down the line. What, what excites you when you look at the future for, for this organization, Teach for, for All? Teach for Botswana. Teach for Botswana, mm. rather. What really excites me is, imagine um, a student of a Teach for Botswana fellow um, being able to stand out in front of a large crowd. It should be could be in an amphitheater, it could be at the ICC, I, uh, GICC, yeah. yes, an eight-year-old who is a student of a Teach for Botswana fellow, mm -hmm. being able to stand up there confidently and talk about what their dreams are, mm. you know, at sharing that age. Sharing their dreams. Sharing their dreams. Fearlessly. Fearlessly and being able to encourage those that are around them to have that confidence, to have that self-reliance, to have that self-assertiveness, because um, it's something that we do not encourage within our children, you know. Public speaking skills as public well. Public speaking skills as well, communication skills, 
you know, somebody who has integrity, somebody who has, um, who is a lifelong learner, who's willing, when we have initiatives that comes along, like we we're talking about the mindset set shift, mm. somebody that is a lifelong learner would actually embrace uh, initiative like this, mm. you know. So that's our dream, to mm. see a different Botswana that would have uh, individuals that are self-reliant, that are willing. Are in, they always say that we are living in the times where a talent is universal, mm. but opportunities are not. Mm -hmm. So opportunities are not. So we, our dream is everybody to see opportunities wherever, wherever they are be able to dream, be able to paint outside the box. Mm. Yes. Well, that's just one person. I, I want I want a bigger dream than that. <laughs> uh, one bigger dream that we have mm -hmm. is we want to see our organization um, spread across the, the nation. Mm -hmm. Spread across the nation and have impact, show impact. So that's one of the dreams, and, and it's something that we see uh, it being possible in the next five years. Mm. If, you, if you had the magic wand and you could wand it and, and, and f influence the folks at uh, yes. Ministry of Basic Education, yes. Ministry of Entrepreneurship, or even just government generally, yes. what is the biggest or the couple of biggest change that you could you could wander into existence on the in the educational arena. Um, I would the biggest change that would I would want to see happen mm. is um, well we, we, we do have resources as a country, right? Mm. But implementation is always a challenge, you know. And one thing that I would, I would wish for ministries is to be on the lookout for initiatives that are being, you know, being brought up, mm. right? And allow 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 organizations like teach for botswana mm. give them give them space we we always hear of of of, of uh, entrepreneurs being incubations for entrepreneurs but we don't have that when it comes to to education right we don't have that when it comes to other most ministries mm. yes so we need to have that space where the ministries allow us, you know, opportunities to to shape in or to, to bring in our our innovative ideas. Mm. Because obviously if it's new is it has to be innovative. Mm -hmm. Yes. It 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 um, yeah it has to be innovative yes. for it to be successful, right? Yeah. And um so you want them to be more receptive, more receptive to organizations such as your own. Yes, mm. to organizations such as us, mm. because ultimately we we are there for the good of the nation. Mm. Yeah, we are there for the good of the nation, and we 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 do not exist uh, to to cause conflict, mm. right? We we exist to align ourselves mm. with their mandate mm. so that both of us or all of us when we, we come together with our ideas ultimately you know it, it, it a, a, a beautiful picture can be created mm. so you you, you sh should be in the same team yes you think at the moment there's a little bit of resistance um, I, I wouldn't call it resistance mm -hmm. I would call it um, um, let the door be open. Mm. Yeah. Let the door be open so that uh, there's a everybody can see from both ends of the of the door, mm. both sides of the door. 
you, you, are, you are speaking politically now. You are, you are being, you are being <laughs> politically correct, <laughs> which is fine. Which is fine. You are being a <laughs> diplomat. Mm. All right. Now, um, is there anything that um, um, you want to leave them with in terms of an, an a final message on, on uh, uh, Teach for Botswana? and teach for all as a concept. Mm. Okay. Mm. You can just touch on, on those final <laughs> thoughts, final <laughs> ideas. Um, Go ahead. So, I, I, we, we we were wondering because like you said you had uh, you had guests mm. education givers guests education mm. guests mm. and um i wondered what um so you're asking me a was question yes i'm asking okay. you a question right. i'm turning okay. around yeah <laughs> i'm wondering what what has been uh, those uh, inspiring actions mm -hmm. that um, your guests mm. have brought forward that would uh, uh, what would that would raise action mm -hmm. towards um, ensuring that initiatives such as us our initiative succeed Mm. Mm. It's a tough question. Uh, one of the, mm. the big pe the biggest people I've had on, on that chair on the in the in terms of the education space, yeah. education generally, including entrepreneurial education, would be Mr. Khangwanyan of Inno mm. Lead. Mm. Uh, he has um, espoused the idea that uh, we get somebody like uh, Dr. Seligman of um, of Harvard, who has had impact in places like uh, Australia and other places, to come and talk to our leaders, yeah. and to come and, uh, as it were, revive them mm. in the direction of saying uh, the interventions that have happened in Australia and elsewhere can happen here, yeah. and uh, can be cascaded down through the methodology that. Dr. Sligman and others have developed and have applied. And he has been struggling for the longest time to get government to agree to invest in such a, an effort mm. and to finance it. Mm. And uh, there's been a lot of reluctance. Mm. Um, but the last time I spoke to him, he said he's been able to engage some other expert, I can't remember the name now, mm. Mm. to talk to Debswana, the leadership of Debswana. So it seems as if from my last interaction with him that some of the ideas he had espoused in earlier programs are beginning to be implemented. And then I myself have repeatedly come up with the idea of uh, having a Stanford seed type of program uh, mm -hmm. or a program like uh, the Gordon School of Business yeah. where they are talking about project implementation mm. as a course, as a system, as a methodology, um, being taught to permanent secretaries, directors, as well as to key implementers of government policy, that having them exposed to this, even if it's for six months, it would go a long way. Mm. Like you mentioned in the earlier part of this podcast, that the problem of implementation mm is our Achilles heel, as mm. it were. So there's that recognition. I came up with the idea, and he, Mr. Khangwanyan, said, no, I have the same idea, too. Mm. I think it's a brilliant idea. It just needs somebody to run with it. Mm. So we'll keep repeating and emphasizing yeah. it, that, look, the issue is not that we don't have wonderful ideas, initiatives, mm. and programs. The issue is project management yeah. and implementation. And if we can just focus on where the greatest weakness is in terms of people who are in their decision making mm. capacity because we all say the same thing that why should it take six mm. months 
to have a meeting with the peers? Why should it take forever mm. to meet with the minister or yeah. anybody in an important position? Why, why is it so hard? Why are we so bureaucratic where, yeah, where it's it's people have become inaccessible? Mm. Mm. Those are the sort of ideas yeah. that ha we have discussed. There may be others, but this is the one that comes to mind mm. uh, from my interactions with my previous guests. Yeah. I hope I've answered your question. Yeah, you, ha you really have answered it because um, ultimately we are talking about uh, gatekeepers. Mm. There are gatekeepers that are making this, you know, it's making it their job that um, initi initiative like this don't see the day of the light, the light of the day, mm. you know. Great as they are, you you have these gatekeepers that will say you cannot pass this, mm. you know. Yeah. And and uh, it's 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 killing. Um, mm. Another you, thing, you know, another thing that slows yeah. us down is this belief that everything has to go through the government procurement system. Yes. There should be exceptions to the general rule. If an idea is not uh, been replicated yet and it comes mm. in and it can work. Mm. We shouldn't say let's go to tender and get everybody else to come up with a similar right. idea when it's not there. Yes. So that also is yeah. limited our ability yes. to innovate and on mm. our feet. Yeah. And it's something that needs to yeah. to change. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And and also something that also needs to be said is uh, is um, well if the government has its own weakness then what about the private sector? Mm. We should be looking at the private sector who has a role to play and, and, and uh, ultimately there they, they, is, I don't think that the, the, there is less bureaucracy in the, in the, mm. in in the, the private, private sector. sector, you know. Mm. So what role are they playing mm. in, in ensuring... In the field of innovation, in, in the in field innovation, of, yes. of, of, of education, yes. they need to be more intentional in investing in that it. area yes wow. and you have we have yes we have csrs in in in, in these corporates in uh, companies mm. but but the thing is um most of them are at their infant stages and um, the, the 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 i the thing is they 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 have a different perspective yeah. of what csr is okay yes we have to shut it there and as we shut it you have to leave the viewer there uh with one last uh motivational, inspirational message as we close. Hmm. What should I say now? <laughs> uh. If you have something to say, if you have nothing to say, we can excuse you. Well, uh, thank you for the opportunity to have uh, had um, Tishwa Botswana presenting itself before you, the, the, the viewer. Um, would like to see Tishwa Botswana's vision of uh, ensuring that every child in Botswana receive quality education regardless of where they come from, regardless of who the mother tongue, what their mother tongue is, they should be able to get the quality education that they deserve. Regardless of where they come from, where they reside, they should get quality education. So we are here to build a pipeline of leaders that will ensure that when children transition or are left behind. They are able to function into the communities. They are able to come up with very brilliant ideas that will ensure that it improves the economy of the country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can you share all your contact, your links, as well as your phone numbers, etc., yeah. on social media, everywhere? Yes. My, I'm available on. Uh, Teach for Botswana is available on uh, LinkedIn, is available on Facebook, on, huh? on Twitter. Uh, our website is teachforbotswana.org. Uh, our office number is 73. 5329. 7, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3